Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have been working on this video in the background for a while. I am going to be ranking all of the foundations I tried within the last, I want to say like month and a half. These are all foundations that have been quite popular and I'm going to tell you what worked for me and what didn't. Something to keep in mind is that I have normal to dry skin. Right now it is currently leaning more dry. Now that it is winter, I have more acne prone sensitive skin. I have a lot of redness, discolorations, acne scarring, all of that. So please keep that into mind when you are watching this video. And without further ado, let's get into the foundations. If you want more in-depth thoughts on each of these foundations, I have a review up for all of these. Let's talk about fifth place, the worst foundation. I mean, technically it's not a foundation, but this is the worst whatever it is, content. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Skin Perfecting Blurring Tint. I had somebody get very mad at me because I kept calling this a foundation instead of a skin tint. It's the base to your face. That's the foundation you build up off top of that. Regardless, yes, it is a skin tint, and I don't like it as a skin tint, as a foundation, as a primer, or mixing in, into other foundations. Every experience I've had with this has not worked out for me at all. So the base problem with this product is that it does not layer over top of itself well at all, and it just peels itself off underneath. So if you put down a base layer of this, it works fine as a skin tint. I don't find it necessarily to be blurring, but if you use concealer in the areas like underneath your eyes, the center of your face where pores typically are right here if you put a little concealer over top of that it does it's fine this works good but the problem is when you add a second layer maybe you're looking for a little bit more coverage this will literally peel itself off and it's just a recipe for disaster after that I also had a hard time finding what way I liked applying this best with a brush I think it's the best with a brush, but not really. A sponge, you get nothing from this. Fingers, okay, no. Fingers was the best way of applying. I liked to spread out with my fingers and then using a brush to kind of press it into the skin, but it was a lot of playing around with this product, and at the end of the day, I didn't feel like it made my skin look good, and there was just a lot of problems with it anyways. Layering didn't work. I did try it as a primer. I found that when I put it underneath a foundation, it would peel up again and look weird when I'd put a foundation over the top. When I mixed it in, it would still peel. So for me, this is just unusable. I think I would like this more if I got it in the right shade, but her shades on the Ulta website at the very least didn't really match up. So I purchased light because the girl in the photo was like darker than me who was wearing light and there was no way that that girl was wearing light. Either that or they edited her skin tone because this is way too light for me. But even then, the fact that it peels itself up, I just don't like it. It doesn't blur the skin. It doesn't apply evenly. Yeah, <laughs> that's last place. All right, number four is probably an unpopular opinion but I did see that this is kind of like you either love it or hate it foundation and it did not work out for me and that is the Charlotte Tilbury beautiful skin foundation you guys I was so excited for this I've been waiting for Charlotte to come out with a new complexion product but unfortunately this just wasn't the one for me I picked up the shade 4 neutral which is the perfect shade for me and by the way I'm not really talking about prices or anything like that now that I'm thinking about it I'm just talking about the formulation solely and how they compare I am wearing this on this side of my face today just to double triple check how I feel about this. I've worn it a good number of times. This is unflattering on my skin. I thought that it would be super glowy and beautiful. That's what I had been seeing in the reviews online. It was drying on my skin. It literally makes my skin look dry. It does have a glow, but at the same time, it still manages to catch onto those dry patches and emphasize them. It looks thick on my skin as well. I do find that for the best application, less is more. The more you apply of this, the more thick and unflattering it looks on the skin, but less is more with this. I will say that I did learn to like this a little bit more when I applied a little bit less, but nonetheless, it still doesn't leave the prettiest finish on my skin. It still manages to look thick and it still emphasizes my pores. Like you can see my texture really bad when I wear this. It's just not worth the amount of work. I really don't understand because it looks so pretty when you first apply it. But then when you put powder on top, I find that it really catches onto the powder and looks really, really cakey. It doesn't wear that well. It's too finicky for me to enjoy personally. So this just did not flatter my skin at all. Let, let's take a turn now. The next foundations I actually really like. So in third place, between first, second, and third, I've been testing these foundations 
foundations every day, all week, doing side-by-side -side wear tests. But what fell in third place was the Dior Forever Skin Glow. They have had this foundation for a while, but they actually reformulated their Forever Skin Line in order to make the products clean. So I wasn't sure how the formula was gonna change all of that. I actually like this one. I don't love it, but I have been enjoying it for an everyday foundation. Today I'm comparing it directly to the Charlotte Tilbury. And this is the first time I've done this particular side-by-side. -side. This definitely looks more hydrating on the skin because these two are actually quite similar in terms of the claims. I much prefer this. This looks healthier on the skin. It looks lighter. This looks thicker. This emphasizes texture less. It wears a little better. And my skin looks more hydrated. I mean, this is just an all-around better foundation for me compared to the Charlotte Tilbury. It's not the most amazing wearing one. When it came to comparing it to the other two foundations that I'm going to talk about today, it lost in wear time. It still is pretty decent. Like, it's not bad at all. But this is more so of an everyday foundation for me as opposed to, like, a long event kind of day special occasion that I want my makeup to look good for hours. I'm not going to go for this. But if I want to, like, look better, look healthier, look more evened out for the day and fresh this is a great foundation to go to I have this in the shade 2m 2n in Dior is the perfect shade for me so this is just a really great everyday foundation it gives a slight glow to the skin it feels really lightweight I don't know if you could see but it just looks super healthy and nice so this gets third place okay second place for a few days there I thought this was gonna be in first but it's not but I freaking love the NARS light reflecting foundation. This is phenomenal. So much better than the Charlotte Tilbury because these were definitely the two most popular launches. This one is so much better. It's so much more lightweight on the skin. It gives a nice glowy complexion. I thought that it was quite similar to the Skin Glow from Dior. These two I did a couple days of wear testing and kind of figuring out which I preferred or not. I think the NARS just wears prettier throughout the day. The one thing about this though that has made this not first place is that for some reason I find it really does sink into my smile lines. But like that's it. Everything looks good but it so quickly sinks into my smile lines. So when I'm applying this now I just make sure it's a really light layer of the product so that so much doesn't sink into the smile lines but if you put too much product on it really emphasizes that but this is again another nice radiant foundation when you set it though I do find it holds almost more of a matte finish and then as the day goes on the reflection will come out a little bit more I think it just looks so healthy it's really easy to apply and it wears down really beautifully so again this is a great everyday foundation but for a longer wear time than the Dior if you ask me so yeah second place it's great one of my new favorite foundations and definitely my favorite foundation from NARS I haven't had the best luck with their foundations in the last couple of years this one is great all right guys first place I love a matte foundation it's very odd that I have dry skin but the Dior forever matte foundation is my new special occasion foundation I mean this beats out the NARS by a hair because this one is a little bit more comfortable and more lightweight more everyday friendly it gives more of that medium coverage but this one just holds up so well throughout the day I wore this New Year's it looked perfect for New Year's it didn't pull off my skin when I was wearing a mask I ate hot pot which is like over a hot soup you're basically like steaming your face the foundation looked just as good after eating as it did when before I started eating so I'm honestly more inclined to reach for the NARS every day but if I need something more heavy duty the Dior Forever Matte's amazing I have this in the shade 2.5 N but like I said right now I'm really more of a 2 N in their line but this is just like a really nice long wearing perfecting foundation I'm not reaching for it every day I'm reaching for the NARS every day but special occasions the sky it's not gonna budge it does a really nice job of holding up it perfects the pores it makes your skin look really really flawless it's not a full coverage but it's definitely more medium to full like kind of in between that range and I love this I think they did a great job with this reformulation the older reformulation I loved of this and I love this one just as much so there we have it those are all of my rankings five four three two and one I hope you guys enjoyed it did you pick up any of these foundations and please let me know of these foundations what were your thoughts what did you like what did you not like and make sure you give us your skin type so that we can go down we can scroll we can see other people's opinions so if you have dry skin say hey I have dry skin here are the foundations that I tried here are my thoughts I think that we can help each other out and that would be great and that should do it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful
helpful. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video, being the reason that I can come here and give you these roundups because I love what I do so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.